Hi, everybody. I'm Pam Kruger. And I'm Jack Gallagher from Money Track on MSN. So, what's Money Track? Well, we're a national television series that's airing on a PBS station near you, but I like to think our show's a little different. It is a little different because unlike all those other financial shows, instead of lecturing you and talking heads yakking at you, we want you to learn, but... We also want you to have some fun. Because after all, we've got to keep your attention, don't we? Absolutely. Yes. Watch. Okay, guys, come on in. Tracy and Francine are house hunting. They're tired of renting an apartment and have saved up for a down payment. We're just ready for it. We're ready. We're ready for a house. But should they buy or rent and use their down payment money in other investments? It just feels like it's still throwing money away. And if we're going to move into a home, we really want to start, you know, start making that equity. How do you really know when it's better to buy a home or rent? That's right. There are emotional attachments to owning your own home. It's mine. It's all mine. And there's family considerations too. It's the American dream, right? But financially, buying versus renting is a balancing act. Most of the time, if the appreciation in the house goes up the cost of living percent, for example, if the cost of living goes up 3% and the appreciation of the home goes up 3%, most analysts will tell you it's probably a good idea to buy a house. If not, then you might want to look at renting. The reality is there are a lot of variables to consider, but you can narrow it down to three important factors, cash flow, terms, and appreciation. And a lot of it is guesswork. So like the rest of us, Tracy and Francine yeah, must first but, guesstimate yeah. if their income will go up or down, if interest rates will go up or down, and if housing prices will go up or down. So Magic 8-Ball, is it better to buy a house or to rent? Oh, concentrate and ask again. Okay, let's concentrate some more. Tracy and Francine must also figure out the cost of buying the house, fees, points, and down payment, and then guesstimate the cost of owning it, adding in repairs, maintenance, and those ever-increasing property taxes and insurance payments. On the other hand, with renting, you just cut the landlord a check and send it off because the landlord assumes all these other expenses. But he gets the home ownership tax breaks. The renter doesn't. You seriously want to be watching this? So where are Tracy and Francine in regards to cash flow? Tracy makes good money as a video editor. Traditionally, lenders don't want your monthly debt, including your house payment, to exceed 36% of your monthly gross income. But that's not reality. Most of the time, people will get mortgage debt that surprises them. They think, well, you know, I didn't qualify for that loan, but I got it. There's a lender out there, typically, if you've got a job, who will help you find a way to get in the house. Are they going too far down the road? I think some of them are. 1800 and then. Tracy and Francine's cash flow gives them $1,800 towards monthly housing costs. Based on cash flow, buying is a good option for them because renting a comparable house is about the same cost per month. But now factor in terms and appreciation. The rule of thumb here, the longer you hold the house, the less appreciation you need to beat renting. And the opposite is true. The shorter you hold the house, the more appreciation you need to beat renting. This is where more guesswork comes in. Check your newspaper's real estate section to see how much homes in your search area are appreciating. This has been on the market for about five days. Tracy and Francine are looking to hold their home for only five years. Maybe they're better off renting and investing the down payment elsewhere. But the area they want to buy has been appreciating in double digits for several years. So their gamble to buy instead of rent could pay off. There's kind of this feeling that the, the market is really hot and that if we don't actually get the house now that we're not going to be able to get a house. So it's all a balancing act between cash flow, terms, and appreciation and predicting what's in your future. So, Magic 8-Ball, is this story over? Ah, uh, decidedly so. Now, after seeing that, I bet you want to learn a little bit more about financial education, investing. Well, you're in the right place because MSN Money has all the tools, all the calculators, and great articles that can get you where you need to go. In other words, we can keep you on track. Speaking of Money Track, the links below are very helpful. Click on Money Track to find out when and where you can watch our show on PBS. Very important. And also, you might be interested, Money Track is underwritten entirely by the Nonprofit Investor Protection Trust. Click on the IPT link to find out what they're doing to promote investor education. And just in case you've been daydreaming a little bit about retirement, we have lots of great lifestyle ideas for all you retiree wannabes. I made that up. You did. I did. Good. I'm giving you full credit. Stop.